Welcome everybody, it's great to see you here. I'm John Zadar, the host of On Top and Hot, where we like to discuss OTC and penny stocks. Today is August 9th, it is Tuesday. Now to keep you busy while I go through some generalities of the OTC market that we go through each day, here is some news that I have looked at from the OTC market over the last four or five days. It's not everything, it's just news that I've been looking at and I think you might be interested in too. Lots of goodies in there. Oldest stuff is at the top, newest stuff is at the bottom. Now, like I said, we talk about OTC and penny stocks. Now, all of those are penny stocks, but a penny stock can be on any market. Any stock under five bucks qualifies as a penny stock. So we do look at stocks on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange as well. Now, we are over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is where I start all of my initial research. I mean, all stocks. I start here. If I can't find what I want, then I'll go out searching. The reason I use this site, not because it's free, that's nice, not because I don't have to log in, how convenient. No, I come here because FINRA and the SEC update this site every single day for every single stock. Do you know how easy that makes doing research? You know how much more research you can get done in this much time instead of that much time? Yeah, I like this site. Now, this is also a good place to see what is going on on the OTC market, whether you want to look at how many trades are going on in a stock or how many trades are going on the entire market. So let's take a look at how we did fare today on the OTC market. You do have to refresh this button. Oh, I'm glad we did. Oh, my God. Hey, folks, boom. Wow, we just hit 15.4 billion shares today. We were at uh, under eight yesterday, were we not? And we were way down to five just a few days ago. Now we did hit 15 billion, mm, maybe six, seven, eight weeks ago, something like that. It is good to see that back. What's interesting is our dollar volume is way low, 1.5 billion. Our average when we're having a bad day is 2.1 billion. Our trades, we got 242,000 trades. Our low average is 250, so we're under that. It's, it's a confusing board to look at, but what I look at every day and want to see grow is that share volume, and that is a huge jump, folks. That's almost like a 100% jump from yesterday. Outstanding. So I've got a few stocks we're going to look at today, stocks you've probably heard of and stocks you probably haven't, but all had real good gains today. Uh, except one, it had a good pullback as a matter of fact, but I expect it to get another strong bounce, if not just pure growth. Let's go see what I got for you today. Now I'm willing to bet you've probably heard of this first stock we're going to take a look at. This is ticker RSHN, RushNet Inc. This company went through a big merger about 10, 12 months ago. Uh, Helios DX along with Grandiza Healthcare. And it was big, had this stock running. She tore up the charts and of course she dipped since then. But she didn't fall all the way back. She did lift her level of her price. And she's had some more jumps since then, including today. Today she had a news press come out that hit a perfect nerve and woof, boy, she just launched. She finished the day at 0 .0031 with over 82% gains. She's on the pink tier. She is current. She's got those precious green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. A transfer agent verified and a verified profile. This is very important information. Now, it's being validated by an unbiased party, a third party. OTCmarkets.com. They validate this information behind the scenes. When everything comes up roses, they give us these green ticks. So this looks good. So what does RushNet do? Well, they tell us here that Helios DX is a national clinical reference laboratory. They offer high complexity urine drug testing, behavioral drug testing, allergy droplet cards, oral fluids, infectious disease PCR cards, and NGS genetic testing. They're contracted in 44 of the lower 48 states, and they're looking to expand their reach, of course. And this allows physicians to get fast and accurate reporting, meeting and exceeding industry benchmarks. The company is very good at what they do. So what was their relative volume today around that news that they had? Big. Very big. She normally has about 10 million shares a day, which is pretty good. But today she did 40 times that much, over 400 million shares. Share structure, hoping for a low float. Well, you can hope all you want. I always go to the unrestricted shares. I trust them more. I just think it's more accurate, closer to the real float. We got 7.6 million here. Now they do list a float here. It's a little better, 7.1. You can accept that if you want. I mean, I'd like to, but uh, actually I think 7.6 is probably closer to the truth. 
their financials. The company is making money for the last two years, 2020, a little over four million, and in 2021, almost six million. I know it's millions because we've got to grab these three zeros here and put them behind the numbers. And they're not spending too much money to make that money. They got to keep over four million of that. So that's pretty good. What are they doing on the quarterly? Still kicking butt. And look at this. I see that they are not only increasing their revenues, but they're decreasing the cost of that revenue. So they're making their profits larger and larger. So the more they do, the more they make. You got to love that sort of business. Disclosures, we got anything new over here. Of course, their financials are current because they're current. And we're looking for 8Ks, things like that. 8Ks are golden goose eggs. You never know what you're gonna find inside. Could be good news, could be bad news, but normally it's important. But we got nothing here right now. So let's go run over to that news and see what we have. So we've got news right up until today. We had news yesterday and today. Both of them go hand in hand. Helios DX responds to growing concerns about beep, 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 monkeypox by adding testing to its infectious disease panel. There you go, folks. I'm surprised this wasn't running like crazy yesterday. RushNet subsidiary Helios DX launches human monkeypox virus testing available immediately. Now, I'll tell you, that's probably it. Lots of people are developing tests. We're ahead of the game with monkeypox. No doubt about that. COVID, we were behind the game. But still, if you're in developing, you aren't getting them on the market making any money yet. This company says they're available immediately, so they're going to be making money immediately. Let's take a look at that news. August 9th, today, RushNet is pleased to announce that Helios DX has launched its testing for human monkeypox virus through its partner laboratory, Effective Today. And that's really all they say. They tell you where you can call up to get them sent to you. If you want to start selling them, here's how you get them. Boy, isn't that great advertising. So this is what's got the company running today, and I'm sure it's going to have it running tomorrow, and God knows how long. Really, this could be a good run because monkeypox is a serious issue, and being on the first mover board, holy cow. I don't know of too many companies that have the testing kits out there already. So RushNet could have a very strong advantage right now. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is ticker RSHN, RushNet, six-month, four-hour chart. We're going to be doing our charting on Thinkorswim. This is a free trading platform. You can get it just by moseying on over to TD Ameritrade, signing up for a free account, and keeping your account open. That's all you got to do, and you can use this anytime you like. So our six-month chart here is kind of impressive. We got a huge jump today. Jack and the Beanstalk stock growing up here hit a high bubble, bigger than anything else on the board. However, to put things in perspective, let me show you the stocks activity back during that merger. This is back in May, June, July of 2021 when Helios DX and Grand Diza Healthcare were coming together. Now back here, right here, it was at 0001, absolute lowest price on the OTC market, on any market. Then here, just before this surge, we were at 001. So that was a thousand percent jump from here to here. And then from here to there, two and a half cents it hit, that is over 2,400% gains. Now, before you think, oh, it just tagged that and fell back real quick. No, I had to actually come over here to a weekly chart. So this is one week. That's many days it was up there. She was up here at about 1,000% quite a few times. But when she quit gains, she started falling, she fell hard, all the way back down to the 200-day SMA on the weekly. And she was riding that all this time until today when we had our giant jump right here. Let's come on back to that giant jump on the six-month, four-hour chart. So we got a low bubble back here of 0005 and a high bubble of 0035. Now we've looked at this before. On April 6th, we looked at this when a news press came out and she ran. The news press wasn't all that impressive. It was telling us about how they were going to reach their next milestones, how they would get their acquisitions, how they were going to make money. It kind of sounded like a boring news press, but the investors loved it. That was a 150% jump right there. And of course, I drew my lines for the bottom of the surge, top of the surge, and I found the middle and didn't take the lines down. And even though this middle line is just the center of these two lines. It's not off of any other price bars to create a resistance or support. It's just the middle of these two. You can see how it was respected by the price all this time. It's banging its head up on it right here, and we're hitting the floor right here. 
and then she started to take off. The last couple of days, the volume has increased, as has the price, quicker and quicker. And the technicals, folks, you can't ask for anything better. Every single one of these is very hot. Our RSI in the four hour right now is at 83. That's incredible. Let's come on down to that 20 day, one hour view. I'm gonna take these lines off here since we don't need them. And it looks like we don't have a whole lot of activity over the last 20 days, just the last three. And I knew it. Remember I said there should be some activity from the news on the 8th. Well, there was, but mysteriously there was also activity on the 7th. Now, I didn't see any news out there. Actually, that's the 5th because of the weekend. But I didn't see any news. And it was on the 4th, she was under the 10-day SMA. And by the 5th, she was on top of the 200. This is when we should have taken notice of it. This is a breakout. This is coming out on top of the 200. Now, of course, we say, well, it's not gonna continue running. It's probably gonna test it. Well, that's why we're gonna watch it. After all this time, it's finally gotten on the 200. And look, you were right. It did come down and test it. Right there, it hit it again, and then it launched. That's why we wanna look at it the first time it comes over the 200. So the second time it bounces, we're ready. You don't want to get in too early. You want to wait for one, two, three green bars on the charts that you're looking at, the five-minute charts, one-minute charts, whatever. You do want to wait for a few green bars. I know you're missing money, but think of that as an insurance payment. You're getting insurance. You're losing a little, but you're, you're minimizing your risk by seeing what direction it is going. You're not guessing. You're just going with it. So, this had a long stretch of run here for the last three days. Is it gonna continue? Let's look at the five day, five minute. She has been moving on a stair step. We got baby step here, mama step there. We got a papa step coming next. I don't know. I can see that she had all day growth. She had a high bubble and she has fallen and looks like she's going sideways. And to be honest, the technicals say that too. Actually say it's pulling up back right now. Our PPO, which is a lot like the MACD, it is getting a crossover. The blue is going to cross that pink. It looks like we've already got a crossover on the MACD. Our ADX, which shows trend, is going sideways, which means there's no trend. It's not going up. It's not going down. It's going sideways. And our RSI is falling. So it doesn't look like it wants to continue running from this point. So do I think it's done? Heck no, <laughs> not in the least. I think Rush Nut has a lot of potential, folks. I mean a lot. The fact that they have their test kit for monkeypox already available puts some leaps and bounds ahead of everybody else. Now, that's not to say they're the only company, but it's out there, and there are not a lot of them. The problem with COVID is, and those COVID tested really good, problem was they came very late. Now we've got the monkeypox test very early at the beginning of the emergency. And I think people will stock up on them. I think they'll buy them whether they need them or not. I think they'll put them in the medicine cabinet right next to the band-aids, just in case. So I would definitely be putting RushNet on my list to watch every single day. Watch the volume. This thing could grow. I like the way this 200 is churning up and looking very smooth. R-S-H-N. The next stock we're taking a look at had, let's say, unexpected gains. This is ticker GXXM, GAX Management. Now, there was no catalyst of her own per se. She didn't have any filings. She didn't have any news. But she did make a big move today. Literally, she made a big move today. Over here at Twitter, I found this tier change form. And we see right there that GXXM moved from the expert market to pink current. Not even pink limited, went straight to pink current. Now that's a big deal, folks. When stocks come off the expert market, they're very, very cheap. I mean, they're in the triple something or other, and they bounce up to wherever the price was before it got yanked off of the open market. So we never know what the gains are gonna be. Sometimes they're 70%, sometimes they're hundreds, sometimes they're tens of thousands of percent. We have seen it before. Now, the difficult thing is, is that expert market moves are not announced by anybody. You can find a few sites that you can pay for that can give you this information in advance. And as a matter of fact, that page right there, I can tell you that comes from the otcmarkets.com website, the one we're on right now. But I have looked everywhere and cannot find this page. I would love to find this page. So I've actually asked the guy that posted it, what's the link for this page? 
Still, the company finished at 008 with almost 74% gains today. They are in the pink tier. They're current now. They have a transfer agent verified, but no verified profile yet. Now, they tell us that Gex Management is a professional employer organization. The professional services Gex provides to its clients include staffing, IT support, infrastructure, accounting, bookkeeping, payroll, benefits management, human resources, and business consultation and optimization. So that's what they do. So what sort of volume did you get around this company today coming off the expert market? Well, she was regularly doing 1.8 million. Today, she did 29 million, almost 30 million. So there was a good strong pop, not as big as I've seen some of them, but that is a nice pop. Share structure on Gex. Gexm has 412 million shares. Not a great float. We got about a half a billion shares in there. Financials, I presume they're making money. Yeah, they are. At the end of last year, they did $1.3 million. They got to keep uh, 820,000 of it. And quarterly, they still kicking the ball around. They are, ooh, boy, that cost them a lot of money for some reason. They made just about a half a million dollars, but they only got to keep $25,000 of it. Comparing that to the years before, obviously they've incurred an extra expense somewhere. Disclosures. I don't think they have anything recent over here. Well, you do have a 10Q for Pete's sake, which may be what actually got them current. They may have just put in this filing and boom, that got them off the expert market onto the open market. So if you want more information about this company, go to the 10Q. It is a quarterly report and not a disclosure. So you're going to get more information and you're going to get a lot of information in there. They'll even tell you the stuff they're worried about. You don't get that in news presses. So there really isn't anything else to talk about with this company, except for the fact that she came off of the expert market. All of the news you see here is pretty old, all the way back to 2019. So let's go take a look at that chart for GXXM. This is GXXM, six month, four hour chart has been under the 200 most of the time here recently it has been fighting and arguing with the 200 have a low bubble here of 0012 not too long ago and a really high of 18 cents what a spike that was now i did go see if i could find the news over at the otc market but remember it only starts at 2019 so there's nothing there to be found so i have no clue what threw this up from just over a penny to 18 cents wow but she came down very very fast and has been riding on this 200 haul which is very much like the 200 day sma it takes 200 days averages them together and then gives more credence to current prices and we can see over here she has been fighting and arguing with the 200 and right there as far as i can tell this is when she fell off the open market she fell down here to a low of double zero one two had a bounce there's some missing days in here and then today she shot back up and she got over that 200 again which is where she's been trying to get to all this time and looking at my ppo and my adx i have these because of what you see right now the pattern put the two together you see this bottle that has just been created by these two lines when it is coming together the blue and the red are coming together the price is falling no duh right and when they start going sideways it's changing direction when they start spreading apart the price starts rising this is the pattern i actually have these two oscillators on my platform for i look for this now this is on the four hour i would like to find it on shorter time frames as well as i'm going down but we see we got a strong macd pushing up rsi is pushing up everything is looking good at this point in time 20 day one hour view all right so there's our rough time right here coming back up breaking the 200 and falling and starting to climb back up there's our 10 our 10 is crossing every single sma and getting on top she's now on top of the 50 she's going to want to probably try to push to that 200. there's our bottle our bottle squeezing right there now this bottle is not the only pattern. You can have both of them going up and the price can be rising. Anytime the PPO is going up, your price is rising. I love the PPO. Our MACD is very strong, just crossed the signal line. Our RSI is just under 60. Volume, very strong today. Let's come down to that five day, five minute view. Well, I like the arch we got here in our 50 day. 
she was falling 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 along with everything else and it is now starting to push up and look we had a huge jump first thing today she got all the way up here she fell very quickly now what time did this hit that hit at 9:45. now i always say you want to get out of a fast runner before 10 in the morning or if you start to see her fall whichever comes first you want to get out of it she started to fall at quarter to 10 fell all the way down here bounced off of the 20 and is fighting with the 20 going sideways why do i think it's going sideways it's waiting for that 50. it could have just continued its fall all the way down to the 50. instead it's going sideways and will dangle here until the 50 comes right now we still have our ppo over top our macd what's that looking like oh we got a crossover and it's pointing down right now we do have a little bit of down action going on and the rsi is pulling back now i'm not saying there's any reason this should continue running it had its day <laughs> came off the expert market hit current i don't know anything about this company i didn't dive into that 10q i don't know if they offer the investors anything but she does have a technical setup right here i'd be looking for the bounce that's all i'd be looking for the technicals don't show any real promise the volume was pretty good today but we can see it is petering off by the end of the day but once this 50 gets to the price i'd be watching for it to maybe come under it just a little bit like it did here on the 20 came under just a little bit and then went back up that's the sort of action i'd be looking for here on the 50 to come just a little bit under it and then come back up and hopefully start climbing but I don't know anything about the company. Some more DD is going to help you there. Last stock we're taking a look at has got a flurry of information I got to show you. They got a lot going on right now. It's a little busy B. This is branded Legacy Inc. Ticker B L E G. She finished today at 0 0.0165 with only 3% gains. Now remember at the beginning of the video, I told you all the stocks we were looking at had big gains. And then remembered, oh yeah, one did have a drop this is the one but i expect it should bounce back and after you see all the information maybe you'll think so too she's pink limited that means that they are late on one or more of their filings and they have to get them caught up in a specified amount of time and it's not very long and if they don't they will get pulled off the open market thrown onto the expert market which is a timeout. you are there until your filings are caught up once they're caught up you're back on the open market and I've got some information about that too. Like I said, there's lots of information with this company. They've got those two green ticks I'm always telling you to look for, so they look good. And they've got independent directors. Now, the thing about independent directors is they've got one primary purpose. You need them to uplist. It doesn't matter if you're going to the QB on the OTC markets or up to the NASDAQ on the major exchanges. Either way, you must have independent directors. But here's the kicker. If you don't have plans to uplist you don't need independent directors so why have them on the payroll so maybe we're getting a little insight to what they're thinking so what is branded legacy about well the company makes cbd and hemp beverages they also make cbd and hemp tincture, tinctures and topicals but they have plans to get manufacturing facilities to start making their own products so what was the company's relative volume today well, she normally does 20,000 shares a day, and today she only did about a quarter million. Not a huge increase, not for all that's going on right now. Hopefully, that's just under the radar. What sort of financials have they got? Not much. Look at this. Their income has been falling year after year for the last four years. At the end of last year, they made $64,000 and got to keep 31000 Quarterly, is it getting better? No. <laughs> it's not getting better. They made $7,000 the first three months of this year and only got to keep $3,000. How do you stay in business like that? Are they paying their employees? <laughs> Disclosures. All right, this is where we pick up the story. As I said, this is Pink Limited. So when you look at a Pink Limited, one of the catalysts is, have they filed? Are they going to get back to Pink Current? So we run over to here to their filings and disclosures, and we look for filings that have just come out. And boy, do they got a bunch of them. Bunch of them here. Now, of course, Pink Limited, they are referring to financial filings. They've got a lot of other filings here, too, that have nothing to do with that. But what we see here is that yesterday they put in an attorney letter. 
Now you must have an attorney letter after you put in your annual report, not your quarterlies, but your annuals, because they're not using CPAs. The best they can do is get a lawyer to look it over and say, yeah, all the information I see in here is legal. I'm not looking at the numbers, I'm looking at the information. And he stamps it, and that's all it takes, and it passes through. Well, this attorney letter was for the period ended 1231-2021. It's right there, 1231-2021, which means they've got a problem. We can see the annual report was amended, and it was amended again. So whatever it is, they've got to get it right. And every time they get an attorney letter, that costs them money. So what we're saying here is that they have just put in an attorney letter yesterday. Everything here is in. Now it's just a matter of being accepted. Did they get it right? Are there jots and tittles in the right places? If they are, this will go to pink current. That's going to help it move. Now they have a filing here that I want to take a look at, acquisition agreement. You see all these other filings they got here? Agreement for 20 million, agreement for 22 million. This is about shares. They have been talking to their insiders, and I didn't jump through all of it, but I looked at enough to see they were trying to accumulate shares from their insiders so that they could use them to make a deal. And this is the deal. Basically, it is an acquisition. Branded Legacy Inc. is acquiring Thomas Johnson's The Quickness Patent which they're calling the acquired company because there is no name of the company. It's called the Quickness Patent. But over and over, they call it the acquired company. Uh, so Branded Inc. and the acquired company desired to enter into a transaction whereby the company acquires 100% shares of the acquired company in exchange for 20 million restricted common shares of Branded Legacy. So they got shares from the insiders, made this deal. They've got the Quickness Patent, which they're calling the acquired company. So they've made an acquisition. Now when we jump back here and go over to the news, we have some more information as well. They had a news press come out today. Branded Legacy Inc. announces cancellation of 102 million common shares. Branded Legacy, a holding company focused on the commercial development of hemp and cannabinoid infused beverages along with an array of CBD topicals and tinctures, is pleased to announce it has reduced its issued and outstanding common shares by 102 million. Outstanding shares, not the float. The float's gonna stay the same, the outstanding shares are gonna fall. Then they also tell us that Branded Legacy is working on an additional 80 million plus shares to remove again. So you're bringing the share count down. They've just made an acquisition. It looks like they're about ready to go pink. There's a lot of things going on with this company. And it had a jump today, but then fell. Is it going to bounce again? I don't know. Let's go take a look at that chart and see if the technicals can give us a hint. Just like all the other stocks, we are looking at a six-month, four-hour review for BLEG. We've got a high bubble back here of 6.3 cents and a low here of just over a penny. And if you look back over the full year, you can see that is a 52-week low. But even more importantly, it looks to me to be an all-time low. I don't think the stock has ever been this low before. So that is just one more catalyst to throw on top of the list. Coming back down to that six month, we can see she's been under the 200. She was trying to get through it earlier, stretching towards it, and just started falling further and further away until she fell under the 50, under the 200, and now is under everything, hitting the all-time low. Lots of volume coming in. I don't know if it's because of any of the things we just talked about or if it's just that low bubble. Technicals do not look good. Our PPO is under the pink with a spread. We don't have a change in direction. It has been falling, 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 and it shows that direction is still going on. At least the MACD has a crossover pointing up, but not much, and the RSI is weak at 43. 20-day, one-hour view. Well, you can pretty much see a straight line just going across here. You know, she goes up and over it, but she's not really getting anywhere. We've got some big jumps. We've got some big drops. A huge one yesterday but she's not traveling anywhere. Even today's jump brought her right back to where she always is. Technicals look very poor. Everything looks to be ready to start dropping real fast. Coming down to that five day, five minute. Well, that was a big jump yesterday. Wow, that was a huge jump. That went from, call it 11 to 28, put a zero in front of it. 11 to 28, you're looking at over 150% jump in five minutes. 
five minutes. I got to break this down to a minute, folks. I want to see if we can actually see that. That was a one minute bounce. That wasn't even five minutes. So in one minute, she went from here to there, and the next minute, she was back down here. Wow, talk about a stock flying. Incredible. So she started today off at, uh, let's call it 18 with the zero in front of it, to 27, 18 to 27. That's a 33% gain. And then she fell back all the way down here. So why are we looking at it? Well, she was running when I first looked at it. I thought she was going to continue running with all the things I found. There are lots of little catalysts, and now you've got that all-time low bubble. Now, maybe she will catch a second wind. I don't know if anybody's aware of the acquisition of that Quicken's patent that didn't come out in the news press. It was only in a filing. And I'm not even sure anybody even knows what it is, what it's worth, what it does. So the more information we get, maybe this stock reacts to it. So obviously, DD is going to be the answer on this one for everybody. Now I want to touch back on this stock, ticker SBOX, SBOX, this is Superbox Inc. I covered this on the 26th of last month. They had come out with news at that time, and this was all it says, Superbox Inc. announces merger. And there was only one day on the chart. That's all there was, one day, and it went from like 22 cents to 38 cents, or vice versa. And that's all it did. And I couldn't tell you anything else except that it had a really small float right it had 4.5 million in the float so they had just done a merger and who was that merger with because that's really what it's about on july 6 superbox a nevada company and quantum core innovation a delaware company announced the merger superbox inks is to be merged with quantum core innovation quantum core innovation is focused on cutting edge transition technologies related to the decarbonization and the waste conversion process in the energy sector and with the bill just being passed for green energy and health this falls right into the category it's a fresh merger you got the bill behind it and like i said the stock only had one day of trading but today it took off today it's at 71 percent gains let's take a quick look at that chart all right, so we are now looking at ticker SBOX, and I just discovered the rest of the chart. There was nothing here before the 26th. I just hit the four hour, and all of that came up. The 26th is right there, and there was a bald spot. Between the 12th and the 26th, there was no trading. She was off the market. So I found her when she came right back on the market right here. We had a serious fall. I mean, she fell serious here, and she has bounced all the way back up. And you can see she is on a very slow incline. It has been happening. Now, I want to come down to what's going on right now. So we're going to come down to the 10-day. This was the day we saw it. This was the day that I found it. It only had one day of trading. I couldn't get the charts to open up for me. She hit a high of 34 cents the first day. Today, she hit a high of 36 cents. Now, just three days later, she fell to eight cents. From 34 down to eight, and now back up to 36. If you'd have gotten into this back here at the eight cents, right now you'd be at 400% gains. Our technicals are strong. PPO is pushing up on the 30-minute chart. That's what we're looking at right now. And we have a crossover on the MACD, and the RSI is pushing up. Now, if I come down to that five-day, five-minute, not going to be a lot to see there. But what I can see right from the start is that we are on a trend. We are going up even with the downfalls. They're staying within the parameters of our trend. Now, if your charts don't look like mine, that's because I am using the Heiken Ashi bar. You can choose what bars you want over here, right uh, there. And I am using the Heiken Ashi. Most of you are using a candle. I use the Heiken Ashi. There are no gaps. There are no bald spots. And we can see she is riding an uptrend. We started down here at $0.08. Cents. We're now at $0.36. Cents. What's next? $0.45, $0.50. Cents. Technicals are growing. They don't look real hot here. We got a crossover to MACD pushing to the signal line and our PPO is trying to get over the pink and it is pointed up. That is a great thing. But we are still working on limited information here. We don't have a lot going on to look at the charts right now. But you're looking at a brand new merger on a company that has a very small float and the bill 
for health and green energy was just passed. And lots of companies are running on that right now. So I would keep my eye on SBOX. Everything looks good. Don't forget about that float. So I hope I'm bringing you something you consider valuable. We're basically looking at, well, trending stocks, if you will. Monkeypox, you know, any company that comes up with that keyword is going to be running. We've got the green energy stocks, decarbonization, solar, hydrogen, waste management. There's lots of those out there. Health companies, not just monkeypox, just taking care of ourselves through telemedicine and all of that. There's a ton of companies out there, and all you really have to do is read the news. Although when you do that, you're going to see a ton of mining companies right now god there's a lot of mining companies they will be nine pieces of news to every one other piece of news you're trying to find but there's nothing wrong with mining companies they are moving on the charts and that's what we play so it is all about the DD what is moving is it the health moving today is it oil moving today is it Chinese stocks is it green energy solar there's lots of stocks out there and you go around to the forums just see what they're talking about watch your scanners see if multiple companies in the same sector are moving up this is how you find the runners folks and don't forget about my favorite page over at the OTC markets current market page that's the link you want it'll show you how many trades every company is getting and that's where you can find runners early in the day get there before it's late see which ones have 20 30 40 trades or everybody else has three or four that's probably one you want to consider really <laughs> remember folks the more DD you do the more you're gonna know see ya